But like I said, go in the group chats, let everybody know one final time. It is 9 15. This is the per this is the start time for us. Okay, so it is time to get this started. Let me record here and we'll get it rocking. Wait. So it's now recording. Amazing. Let's record it on this laptop as well. All right, amazing. So Welcome, welcome, welcome to Mornings with Nano. Today is Friday, October 15th, 2021. And today we have a very special guest on the call. We've dedicated the whole month to leadership. And, you know, this is someone that's not only a mentor to me, but he's a brother to me. And, you know, I never had a mentor until this individual came into my life. But I want you all to know that when the student is ready, the mentor appears. And, you know, for a long time, I studied Matt. For a long time, I showed up to events. I took pictures with Matt. I did everything in my power to make sure that I was noticed by him. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, he wasn't the one that noticed me. It was actually his wife. And when his wife noticed me and told him, like, yo, you need to pay attention to that kid, Nano. That kid is going to be special. He wasn't too sure about it. But, you know, he has to trust his wife's intuition because she's never been wrong. And, you know, I thank God every day because of, you know, because of that, because, you know, she believed in me because before anyone else did. And, you know, Matt saw something in me. He literally took me under his wing and he taught me the way to run this business. He, he taught me what the importance of a leader is. And, you know, one of the biggest lessons he taught me, he said, and then a leadership is the ability to take someone to a place that they've never been and they thank you when they get there. OK, and he always taught me that. And I see how is it that he leads me. He's leading me to a place that I've never been to. And guess what? When I get there, I'm always going to be grateful and thankful that he got me to that place. But for those who don't know who Matt Rosa is, right? Matt Rosa is a top five network marketer in the world. He is the top earner within our company. Okay, this is an individual, right, that has been able to impact the lives of over 300,000 people all over the world. I think his impact, in my opinion, has already reached the millions, okay, because this is somebody that leads by example. He has the heart of a leader, but most importantly, aside from his accomplishments, guys, I want you guys to understand, this is one of the hardest working individuals that you will ever meet in your whole entire life, right? It's amazing how the, the universe aligns you with the people that are just like you, right? Just an extreme hard worker, leads with his heart, goes above and beyond for everybody in his family. And what I respect the most about Matt is that he doesn't measure his success by what he has. He measures his success by what everybody around him has. And he makes sure that everyone in his family is always good. And that's something that I always respect because he's a family man. He's a team man, and he's on this call here today. So if you guys are excited for Matt Rosa, can you guys put some fire emojis in the chat box? Because I'm about to bring up the man, the myth, the legend himself, and my brother, Matthew Rosa, Chairman 750, to the floor, man. Take it away, my brother. Thank you so much for doing this. We appreciate you. And we love you, fam. Yeah, I love you more, bro. I'm so, so, so grateful to be on this call right now. Neto, you know, when you first started doing these um, – I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we're on year two, if I'm not mistaken. Two and a half. Uh, two Ooh. and a half, yeah. So, you know, I remember when he first started doing these and you were waking up early every single day and you were being consistent with this. I admired it. I was like, man, that's, that's a commitment, man. Um, but I really got to see your commitment truly when we started traveling. And we're on tour doing events you know, we're up until one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, having dinner with the team, training the team after events. And doesn't matter what time you were asleep, immediately you were on the very next morning in order to fulfill the commitment that you had uh, made to the people that were showing up. And at that time, I remember it only being like maybe 200, 300 individuals. And then I saw the commitment for real, for real, when we were going on vacations together. <laughs> Uh, you, for those of you guys that don't know, Neno's one of my favorite people to vacation with. He's always a blast. We always have the best of best of times. Um, and we go in, we have a great time. When we celebrate, we celebrate hard. And um, it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what time we're back at home. It doesn't matter if he doesn't sleep in order to be on this call. No matter what is going on, he is making sure that he's here. He's showing up. And for him, it's not even about making 
the company a better place, but making this industry a better place. There's people from all different types of companies inside of this call right now. And his intention is just to pour into people, to be able to develop leaders that are going to make this the best industry in the world. And that's not something that we should take for granted. Um, That's not something that should just become routine for us that we're like, all right, mornings with Nano is here. Like, this is something that this individual is so conscious, so intentional with. He had this whole month planned out for you guys, topics on topics on topics of exactly what it is that he wanted you guys to be able to learn based off of his his experience and what it is that he's been able to learn. And I don't know about you guys, but it's impossible for me to be able to take something like this for granted. A lot of you guys see me here in the mornings. I'm jumping on mornings with Nano. I'm learning. I'm in that state of being a student at all times so I can fill that cup and be able to pour into other individuals. So. You know, I just thank you, Neno. Um, We love you. We appreciate you on behalf of the whole Mornings with Neno family that's on this call right now. We're just so, so grateful for you and everything that you put on the line for each and every single one of us inside of this organization. Um, And to each and every single one of you guys on this call right now, um, if I'm seeing inside of the chat a bunch of friends, um, it's so good to see you guys grand rising. Um, and to the individuals that I've never had the opportunity to meet, the individuals that I've never had the opportunity to train and mentor, it's a pleasure, it's an honor uh, to be able to do this. Leading isn't something I take for granted. You know, Neno went over the five levels of leadership for you guys earlier on this month. And, you know, the title is the lowest level of leadership that there is. I ask that you don't listen to me because of my tenure inside of the inside of this industry or or a rank that I may have or a title inside of my company. But I ask that you listen to me and 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 you implement the teachings and the learnings um, because you give me permission um, and because you know the intention behind it. Um, you know the. Second level of leadership is the permission level of leadership. Um, And you guys giving me the permission to lead, giving me the permission to be able to guide you guys and to teach you guys based off of the experience that I've had thus far. Um, It's just such an honor. It's a privilege. Every time I jump on calls and be able to pour into individuals, it's something that I just get super excited about. Um, So uh, two things that I'm going to ask you guys. First and foremost, we got to make sure that we're taking notes, not because note takers are money makers, right? Uh, We got to take notes because honestly, we're going to forget the vast majority of what it is that we learn if we don't write the information that we learn down. Um, and our goal is to change the world. Our goal is to impact lives, enrich lives, educate lives. And if we're going to create a better tomorrow, it is imperative. We cannot afford to forget what it is that we learned today. So with that being said, just make sure you guys are taking notes. Uh, these notes are something that you can utilize in the future as a tool, as a resource. Um, the second thing that I'm going to ask you guys is each one, teach one. Um, if you're on this call, 99% of you guys are inside of the greatest industry in the world, which is network marketing. Um, and if you're looking to make the big impact and the big income, it's not necessarily about what it is that you can do, but rather what it is that you can teach, because what you can teach is duplicatable and duplication is going to lead to the momentum that each and every single one of us are after, right? So with that being said, I encourage you. I encourage you after this call to run calls with your organizations. It doesn't matter if you have three individuals in your organization or 3,000 individuals in your organization. I encourage you. You guys are getting free game on each and every single one of these calls that Neno is hosting, right? So make sure that you're taking this information and bringing it back to your organization, bringing it back so that your team can experience the breakthroughs as well, right? Uh, So with that being said, guys, my name is Matt Rosa. Um, Neno, I appreciate the introduction. Um, A lot of people, when they speak about the success that we've had, they speak about the numbers, right? They speak about the accomplishments. They speak about the tenure. Um, You know, yes, we have developed a team of over 150,000 active right now inside of our organization, over 40 different countries. Um, We've been able to accomplish some serious, serious, serious feats, you know, inducted in the Millionaire's Hall of Fame. Um, Over $25 million made inside of this industry at the age of 28 years old, Um, over 500 six-figure earners, 47-figure earners. I mean, this thing has done astronomical things for my life, for Neno's life and the people involved, but I ask that you don't judge me or uh, 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 
get inspired by the numbers because numbers at the end of the day are infinite. And if our quest is based, the happiness of our quest is based off of the numbers that we obtain. I need you to understand that the happiness is never going to be achieved. You know, we're always looking at these numbers, numbers of likes on Instagram, numbers of followers that we have, the number inside of our back offices or the number inside of our bank account. And I need you guys to understand that these numbers are just infinite. What I want you guys to understand is how it is that all of that has truly changed my entire life. And because so much has changed my entire life, I need you to understand that my entire life began to change, right? It's changed the way I think. It's changed the way I react to specific situations. It's changed the, the, the way it is that I respond. It's changed the type of husband that I am. It's changed the type of son that I am. It's changed the type of leader that I am. And by default, my life began to change in a very, very drastic way. Um, and I think that when everybody joins this industry, they fall in love with something different. You know, specifically inside of our company, you know, people fall in love with the trading aspect. Um, inside of your company, you may be love, in love with the culture, right? Um, you may be in love with the personal development. You may be in love with the trainings like this. Uh, you may be in love with the clothes, the art of the clothes, right? Um, but for me, I fell in love with leadership. And that's why I'm so excited to be on this month's call. Specifically, I fell in love with leadership. You know, the ability to have somebody or a group of individuals be able to follow without you telling them to follow, that always blew my mind. The ability to be able to take someone somewhere and then pave a way for other individuals to follow, the ability to bring someone somewhere that they had no intention of going, but they thank you when they get there. You know, leadership to me was absolutely amazing. And I remember looking at my compensation plan uh, back in 2015 and seeing the numbers. And I was like, how the hell am I going to build a team of that size and that magnitude? I had no experience when it came to doing anything remotely close to that. I, I didn't have a mentor that had already accomplished that um, to be able to teach me and to be able to guide me and, and show me how it was that we were going to do that. So seeing the numbers on a compensation plan, no matter what company you're in, I need you guys to, to no, I don't need you guys to, but I'm sure you've looked at it at one point or another and you're like, wow. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know how it is that I'm going to become a presidential in my company or an SED in my company or a chairman inside of my company. I have no idea how it is that I'm going to be able to accomplish that mission, that vision, right? And because of that mindset, I had to change the way I looked at the business. So the business that I looked at began to change. Again, I had to change the way it was that I looked at that business. So the business that I looked at began to change, right? Um, and I essentially stopped chasing the numbers. I stopped chasing the numbers because if I was chasing the numbers, I was trying to build the team, right? What I decided to do personally was instead of building the team, I decided to build the leaders. And if I could build the leaders, it was inevitable that the leaders would begin to build the team. That was my sole intention. That was my sole focus. That was what it was that I wanted to accomplish, right? So in order to become the best leader that I could potentially become, what I needed to do as a leader, right? I needed to figure out why it was that I followed. If I was going to become the best leader that I could become, I had to look at why it was that I followed, right? You know, as I study individuals like Pastor Rich Wilkerson, as I study individuals like John C. Maxwell, as I study individuals uh, like Simon Sinek, I recognize that all these individuals have very, very different lives. They're very different culturally, they're very different in what it is that they focus on. Some focus on business development within leaders. Some focus on the spiritual aspect of leadership. They, they, they're so different, but each and every single extremely powerful leader, regardless if it's in spirituality, business, if it's in um, politics, every leader, regardless of the differences that they have, have some uncanny things in common. Um, and then upon just realizing those things, um, that's what I sought after. I didn't seek the lifestyle. I didn't seek um, the, 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 the recognition that they got. What I began to seek was specifically the traits that they had that made me want to follow these individuals. So my goal today, my goal today is very, very simple. My goal today is to help you recognize why it is that you follow specific individuals to help you adapt that mission and that vision. Uh, my goal is to be able to change the way you think. Um, as a leader, as a mentor, it is impossible for me to change what it is that you do. But 
I can effectively change the way it is that you think. And if I could change the way it is that you think, it's inevitable that you'll begin to change what it is that you do. Um, so with that being said, let's jump right into this thing. These are the traits that and the characteristics that I look for when I'm following a leader. I've been giving this training a lot to a lot of my teams um, inside of our company. Um, so if uh, you've never heard this before, I think you're in for an absolute treat. Uh, the first thing that I recognize uh, that the leaders that I follow all have in common is that they listen twice as much as they speak. The first thing that I recognize that the leaders that I follow all have in common is that they listen twice as much as they speak. You see, God gave us two ears and one mouth to listen twice as much as we speak, right? As a leader, I think we're always in a state of just trying to find the answers for people. We're always in a state because we have to at the end of the day. We have to find the answers for the organization. People are depending on us. And I think that so often we get so caught up in trying to give the answer, give the answer, give the answer, that we're not diagnosing the problem accordingly. And because we're not diagnosing the problem accordingly, we may be prescribing the wrong solutions. If we're not diagnosing the problem accordingly, we may be prescribing the wrong solutions. When you come into a doctor's office, I want you to think about it. The doctor doesn't immediately say, you're sick with this and here's a prescription to be able to fix it. No, 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 no. The doctor begins to first ask questions, right? The doctor asks questions first. The doctor's asking how it is that you're feeling. What are some of the symptoms that you're having? They may do some blood tests on you. And then from there, they're able to prescribe a solution for whatever it is that you may be feeling, right? Well, in leadership, it's the exact same way. You know, when I speak to a leader, the first thing I'm asking is what's going on? I'm asking questions, questions. You know, I had uh, one of my one of my little sisters, one of the leaders inside of our organization, Mina, uh, here the other day. And uh, Mina was sitting at my table and we had insane breakthroughs. And the crazy thing is, I just asked her a series of questions. And nine times out of 10, the answer is within, right? Nine times out of 10, the answer is within. So when I go to train a team, I'm not just jumping on and saying, all right, cool. This is what I believe that the team needs to know. No, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm contacting the leader that is leading that organization. And I'm saying, hey, Neno, what is going on inside of the organization? What are some of the trials and the tribulations that you're experiencing? What are some of the setbacks that you have experienced? What is something that the team can implement and utilize more of in order to experience more breakthroughs, right? I'm asking questions. Why is it that I'm asking these questions? because those respective leaders are closer to their campfire than I am. I'm in a different stage of my career. I'm in a different stage of my business. So I'm not able to see the exact same things that they're able to see. So they are my boots on the ground. They are my eyes and ears. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Neno, hey, Neno, fill me in and let me know. If Neno has an issue inside of his business, um, if Neno has an issue inside of his personal life, I am listening, consciously listening. Too many people are listening in order to respond. They're not listening in order to understand, right? The greatest leaders that I follow have the ability to listen twice as much as they speak. Again, to listen twice as much as they speak. The second trait that all leaders have in common that I follow, right? Second trait that all leaders have in common that I follow is that they walk it like they talk it. They walk it like they talk it. You see, I need you to understand that in leadership, people aren't watching your mouth as much as they're watching your feet. People are not watching your, your, your mouth as much as they watch your feet. What does that mean? They're not listening to what it is that you say as much as they're watching what it is that you do, right? We, remember, we are leaders. That means that we are leading. That means that we are at the front. That means that we are doing something first and then paving a way for other individuals to be able to follow what it is that we had just done, meaning that we have to lead by example. Leaders lead. So are you actually practicing what you preach or are you rehearsing lines that you heard on a screen? Ask yourself that. Are you practicing what it is that you preach or are you just rehearsing lines? Have you become an actor 
because you heard a certain leader on a call saying something. You're saying, well, I'm going to say the exact same thing. But are you actually practicing what it is that you preach? You see, anything that I instruct or teach my organization to do, you better believe that I've done it. I'm doing it and I'm going to continue to do it. I've done it. I'm doing it. And I'm going to continue to be able to do that. Right. It's, it's, it's so counterproductive. It is so hypocritical to tell your team, to teach your team, to do something that you are not doing yourself. I cannot expect for my organization to be in a constant state of phase one, meaning bringing new people into the organization and exposing the opportunity on a day-to-day basis. If I'm not doing that myself, if my personal sales volume is not all the way up, if I'm not on the leadership board inside of my company, I cannot expect for my team to go out there and do the exact same thing. I cannot expect for my team to throw events and host events if I'm not hosting events. You know, just this year, we threw March Madness, 6,000, 7,000 people invested crazy amounts of money. We went ahead and we threw uh, SummerSlam, about four to 5,000 people invested crazy amounts of money. And it doesn't even matter about the big events. You know, out here in Miami, we're hosting an opportunity event on the 21st in order to be able to show this opportunity. You see, anything that I tell you to do, I'm doing myself. I cannot expect for my team to pay a monthly subscription if I'm not paying a monthly subscription. I cannot expect for my team to remain coachable if I am not coachable. I cannot expect for my team to take initiative if I am not taking initiative. I cannot expect for my team to consistently post on social media if I am not posting on social media. You see, at the end of the day, the team is watching what it is that I do and not what it is that I say. They are watching how it is that I move and not what it is that I say. So the greatest leaders that I've ever followed, they're in the field. They are not uh, leading from behind. They're not leading from a screen. They are inside of the trenches, working with the organizations, getting their hands dirty, powwowing with the squad, actually there on a day-to-day basis. I'm with my team almost at any given point. I have a chairman next to me. I have a six-figure earner next to me. I have a P5000. I'm developing a new leader. I'm with my organization because I am the heartbeat of my organization as a leader. And without the heart, the brain cannot function. Without the heart, the body cannot function. Without the heart, the muscle cannot function, right? So as a leader, we have to truly lead by example. We have to truly be those individuals that are leading from the forefront. They are not somebody that is leading from the back. If you, if you follow a leader, I want you to truly, truly ask yourself, is this leader doing what it is that they tell me to do? Is this leader next to me inside of the trenches or is this leader a superstar, almost like a celebrity? I did not come to this industry to be put on a pedestal. I did not come to this industry to be considered a celebrity. No, 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 no. I came to this industry in order to change lives. I came to this industry in order to make myself a huge bag and to be able to teach other individuals how to do the exact same thing. I did not come here to be Hollywood. I did not come here to not be obtainable. I did not come here to not be relatable. I came here to be in the trenches right next to my organization and lead by true example. Ask yourself, is your leader doing that? If not, You may have to check yourself or you may have to check that specific leader, right? The next thing that my, uh, 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 that all the leaders that I follow have in common, right? Is that they know the difference between motivation and dedication. They know the difference between motivation and dedication. You know, the greatest leaders that I follow, their world can be up in flames, but you'll never be able You'll never be able to tell. That doesn't mean that they're hiding anything from you. That doesn't mean that they are perfect by any means. That doesn't mean that they are exempt from anxieties, that they are exempt from depression. That does not mean that they are exempt from laziness. 
That does not mean that they're exempt from anger. That does not, just because they are a leader, they probably face more trials and tribulations than the average individual, right? But one thing that I recognize is that all of these leaders, no matter what is going on, they get the job done. You see motivation, motivation at the end of the day. At the end of the day, motivation is truly just a feeling. It is something that we feel, right? Motivation is, is, is gonna come and go when life begins to happen. You may be motivated on these calls, but what happens when you get off of these calls? What happens when life happens? What happens when that boyfriend, girlfriend breaks up with you? What happens when they're going through a divorce? What happens when you get fired from that job? What happens when you get COVID and you can't work your job? What happens when life genuinely happens? What happens when you wake up in the morning and, and, and you're anxious for no reason? What happens when you wake up in the morning and you're depressed or angry for no reason. You see, motivation is just a feeling and we do not remain a certain feeling forever. Ask yourself, when's the last time that you've been happy forever? When's the last time that you've been angry forever? When's the last time that you've been excited forever. You see, motivation is just a feeling. I got beef with motivation. I don't like motivation because it tends to play these mind tricks on me. No, 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 no. I'm not here to motivate you. I'm here to dedicate you. I'm not here to motivate you. The greatest leaders are not motivated. They are dedicated. You see, write this down. Dedication is doing what it is that you swore to do long after the feeling of when you made that commitment fades. Dedication is doing what it is that you swore to do long after the feeling of when you made that commitment phase. One more time. Dedication is doing what it is that you swore to do long after the feeling of when you made that commitment phase. You know what? I'm, I wake up and I don't want to do things, but... I get it done. Why? Because my family depends on this. I feed my family with this. This is not an opportunity for me. This is not something that I'm going to try out. This is something that I'm going to get done. People are counting on me. People are literally every single day relying on the fact that am I going to wake up and get it done or am I going to allow life to happen? You think that your favorite leaders just got it figured out? One of my biggest pet peeves, and I get thousands of messages a day, regardless if it's from WhatsApp, Telegram, text message, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, thousands of messages a day. And I do my very best to answer each and every single one of them. And every single day, I get the same question for the past few years. How do you stay motivated? I'm gonna tell you the truth. You don't. It is impossible to stay motivated. It is literally impossible to stay motivated. But every day I'm dedicated. And I have a three, two, one rule. If I need to get something done, I count down from three. And every number, I give myself a reason, a why, because your why will help you. I give myself a why as to why it is that I need to get this done. So if I need to get up and, you know, this morning, this morning, I was up until 2.30 in the morning, um, trying to get a good entry on Superbid. And I'm, I'm, I was with, I was with a Mike Sotero trying to get a good entry on Superbid. And I was like, man, I'm exhausted. I've been up since about 7 a.m. It's now 2.30 a.m. I got to be up again at 7.45, 8 a.m. in order to do the Neno call. And I'm in between REM sleep and my eyes are just not opening up. And three, that people are counting on me. You got to get up. Two, you get to do this. You don't have to do this. One, you're going to be the greatest version of yourself today. Open those eyes and get that thing done. Open those eyes and get that thing done because we are not motivated to accomplish things. We are dedicated to accomplish things, right? So anytime that motivation is slipping, remind yourself you are not a motivated leader. You are a dedicated leader. And ask yourself, if the, the leader that you were following, do they have that trait? If not, you might have to check yourself. You might have to check yourself. Uh, number four. What I love about the leaders that I follow specifically is that they don't fake it till they make it. They don't fake it till they make it. I remember when I first got started inside of this industry, um, there were a lot of false prophets. There were a lot of false idols. Um, and I remember I began to follow individuals and I saw the way they lived. So I figured if they had the success that they have, 
I would have to be an individual that emulated that success. And there's one thing where you're, you're tricking the mind on the spiritual side of success to believe that you're already a six or seven figure earner, to believe that you've accomplished the things that you want to accomplish, to believe that you've gone ahead and impacted the world and gotten the recognition. But it's another thing to act publicly as if you're already there. And I see it happen on a day-to-day basis inside of this industry. You want to make me cringe? You really want to make me cringe? Go take a picture next to a car that's not yours and portray as if it is. You want to make me cringe? Go ahead and wear someone else's jewelry and jump on your live pretending as if you have that lifestyle. You want to make me cringe? Go ahead and pretend that you are at some rich person's house or you rented this crazy Airbnb when your team is actually throwing the event. Mm. That makes me cringe with everything inside of me. That makes me cringe with everything inside of me. I had an individual, I was out in, uh, where was it? Oh, Sacramento. I believe it was Sacramento. Um, and, uh, this, this gentleman, young guy, um, asked me, he was like, man, can I, can I wear that chain? Can I wear your chain? I was like, weird, weird flex, but sure. I understand, you know, having it in your hand and, 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 and being able to obtain it after you've held it. I I get it. I get it. Um, I, I used to go to the dealerships and sit inside of cars in order to vision myself inside of these cars. I still do it to this day. If I see a beautiful house, I like, I drive into the driveway and feel how it's going to feel when that is mine. Um, but he's like, so can I wear your chain? And I was like, yeah. And immediately he takes out his phone and starts videotaping it and talking to the camera. And I had to stop him. I was like, yo, (laughs) no, 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 dude, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. People follow leaders, not because of the things that they have. And if they follow leaders because of the things that they have, they're going to join for the wrong reasons and leave for all the right ones when they don't get it. (laughs) I hope that did not go over your head. People do not follow leaders because of what it is that they have. They follow leaders because at the end of the day, they are relatable. They are relatable. That's why it is that we follow leaders. And if they're joining for the things that they have, they're going to join for all the wrong reasons and leave for the right ones when they don't obtain those exact same things. You see, I think that one of the biggest reasons we've been able to help so many individuals remove the lid over their lives. You know, we have individuals that contact us all the time from different industries like real estate, different industries like direct sales or insurance, right? And even different leaders from other network marketing companies. And they come to us and they say, well, look, I've been at this level. And one of the biggest reasons that they come to us is because they've seen the progression inside of our lives. They've seen the progression inside of our lives. You know, if I was posting things, the money, the lifestyle, the cars, the clothes, we have those. We have those things. But if I was posting those things, I would no longer be relatable to the average individual that is watching me. They would think that I have to have that lifestyle in order to see that type of success. When in the reality, that is not the case at all. That is not the case at all. You don't have to have that type of success or that type of lifestyle in order to see the success. People do not want to see perfection. It's progression over perfection each and every single time. I'm going to say that again. It is progression over perfection each and every single time. They want to be able to relate with you and see the progression because if they relate with you and they see the progression, then the belief level of them being able to see that progression, just because they are very similar to you, they have the same ethos, the same ethics as you do, the same mindset as you do, they're going to have the belief level that they as well can progress as well. Right? You know, I, I look at the leaders that I follow. I look at the leaders that I follow. They have an amazing lifestyle but they're not leading with that. See, all of that is a byproduct. All of that is a byproduct. You go on my social media, you're not going to see cars, clothes, crazy amounts of jewelry or anything along those lines. I lead with value. I lead with inspiration. I lead with education. I do not lead with the intention of getting somebody to follow me because I have what it is that they want. 
right? Um, the next thing, next thing. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Do, 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 do. Neno just told me that I have three minutes. I've been going off. All right, so I had a few things here for you. Um, I'm going to choose the last and final one. Um, all right, cool. The greatest leaders, the greatest, greatest, greatest leaders um, that I follow, something that they have in common is that they understand that 90% of leadership goes unnoticed. They understand that 90% of leadership goes unnoticed. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy because as leaders, we pour so much into individuals and we have the intention of doing so to better that situation or that individual. And it feels good for us. And a lot of the times we want to take credit for being able to help them. Yeah, I don't take credit for Neno's success. And I love the fact that he gives me so much credit for the mentorship and the guidance. But I need you to understand that I take zero credit for even my success. You see, a constant, and I need you to write this down, a constant need for credit will continuously leave you in debt. <laughs> a constant need for credit will continuously leave you in debt, right? If we're consistently in need for that credit, and we don't receive that credit, we are not gonna fulfill, be fulfilled inside. We are not gonna feel good inside. So that constant need for credit is gonna continuously leave you in debt. I don't take credit for any of the success that we've experienced. All the credit goes to God and the squad. I understand that I have the opportunity of a lifetime. I took advantage of it. I was chosen to lead. I was put in this position, but I am not the reason that this is a reality. I am not the reason that the team is hundreds of thousands of people. I am not the reason that, that we have 500 uh, six-figure earners. I'm not the reason that we've become one of the greatest network marketing companies in the world. I'm not the reason for any of the success that we have. A constant need for credit is going to continuously leave you in debt, right? So give the credit away. The credit that you deserve, the credit that you earned is going to be a reflection inside of your back office. If the numbers are not up here, you do not deserve the credits. That's the credit that I need. Today's Friday, payday, baby. We get paid every Friday for the people in IM. Yo, today's payday. When that pay quicker hits my account, that's the credit that I need and I deserve. If I want to go ahead and, 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 and get credit, I'm going to walk the stage and get recognized at conventions in front of thousands and thousands of people. I don't need credit on a Zoom call. I don't need credit on one-on-one -on -one uh, 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 conversations. I don't need credit from my leaders. I don't need credit from the people inside of my organization. I'm going to get the credit in the places that I deserve it and I earned it. That's the back office. That's my bank account. That's that's me walking across stage and getting recognition in front of the whole company. I don't need the credit. All the credit goes to God and the squad. 90% of leadership is going to go unnoticed anyways, guys. All the late nights, all of the 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 one-on-one the, the -on -one conversations, all the mentorship, all the money that's invested into the organization. I mean, we put over a million dollars into the business over the past two months. I, I'm not asking for credit for that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That tax return is my credit, right? That that the, the 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 credit that I get, it's measurable. At the end of the day, I don't need the non-measurables, guys. I'm good off of that. So, with that being said, um, you know, we had a, a lot more uh, points to go over. Um, I don't want to go over my time. I want to respect the time that I was given here. I want to respect the time that I was allowed here. I thank you guys for jumping onto this call, allowing me to pour into you guys, allowing me to guide you guys. And yo, go implement what it is that you learned today and check the leader that you're following and make sure that they have the same characteristics and traits that you agree with, right? Um, I hope that you guys truly implement this stuff because to know and not do is to not know at all at the end of the day. So don't let it go in one ear and out the other. And go crush your day. Be a badass, right? Give gratitude and thanks to our creator. Give gratitude and thanks to the people inside of your organization. Um, and go crush it because you're more than capable of being the best version of yourself on the best day ever, which is today. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Big homie Neno, little bro. I love you, bro. Thank you for giving me the platform to be able to teach and to be able to guide. I'm going to pass this back on over to you, King. Let's go, man. Wow, brother. Thank you so much for that incredible car. I got like two pages of notes on my journal. Guys, if you guys got value from Matt Rose, a type of thank you in the chat, type some fire emojis, type an emoji that represents how you feel right now about that incredible call, bro. You blew the cap off the roof. 
you never disappoint, bro. And just so many incredible points, bro. Wish we could keep it running, but you know, I think uh, Brandon Boyd got a call after this. So, um, yo, fam, wow, just an incredible call. So grateful. I learned so, so much. You know, that last point that he said 90% of leadership goes unnoticed, and the 10% that do gets noticed, we give it away anyways. That's that that's so true right there, fam. And I'm so blessed and grateful that we have leaders like Matt. That yo, Neto, real quick, real quick, real quick. If I gave you guys some value, go help your boys' dreams come true. Help me out with the algorithm on uh, social media. Comment on my last post um, about my music video. Uh, help me out with the streamings. I'm looking to come to a city near you while we're uh, touring. So just go comment below that. Help out with the algorithms. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Quick little selfish plug in there, uh, if yeah. you don't mind. <laughs> Please, bro. Yeah, guys. Yo, right now, let's go all do it. You know, I'm down. Let's go drop. Let's go show some love. I'll drop the link in the Nano's Keys to Success chat so you guys can go show him love. I'll also drop the link for the Spotify, the Apple, so you guys can all have access to his new music video. Let's show him love. He came in here for free. He didn't even have to wake up this morning. So all we can do to show love, fam, is just go show love on his com on his comments, on his Instagram, on the YouTube. Subscribe to him. You know, let's really, really be able to give back, right? That's our way of giving back and you know, that's what it's all about. So I know the call's about to start up this other call. So I just want to send you guys home with some love, with some prayers. I pray that each and every single one of you guys has a blessed rest of your weekend. I love you guys all so, so, so much. I thank you guys for being great students. You know, we pray over man. We pray that Matt continues to be a great leader for all of us to follow, keeps him healthy, keeps him sane, and keeps him, you know, humble, most importantly. And most importantly, guys, I love you all so, so much. Thank you, guys. We had a great week. Let's have a great week coming up next. And I hope you guys all have a blessed rest of your weekend. Stay, stay humble, stay blessed. And I'll see you guys on Monday for another episode of Mornings When End. I love you guys so much. There's another call happening right after this. So let's run it. Matt, they say comments are comments limited, Matt. For the for the something. It says comments limited. Uh I'll go ahead and I'll fix that right now. Okay. Yeah, for his recent point. Yeah, you can't comment, bro. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fix that right now. Lit. You have to follow me in order to comment. Follow in order to comment. Follow him, order to comment. And um, make sure you guys subscribe, show love, comment on the YouTube as well. It takes two minutes to do. All right, fam. So love y'all, appreciate y'all. And I hope to see you guys on Monday for another episode of Mornings with Nano. And also, real quick, can't forget... Season three drops on Monday. Mornings on Nano podcast season three drops Monday, guys. Do not forget it, okay? Season three drops Monday. Do not forget it. I pray all of you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and I love you guys. Let's get it.